With everything that you have learned so far, you're probably well equipped to create simple spreadsheets, single use spreadsheets, which are mainly doing some computations that we want to perform, but not necessarily addressing the requirements of what we call as serious spreadsheets, which is creating large spreadsheets that are repeatedly used and also undergo changes over time. Remember, when you make a change to a large spreadsheet, if it turns out that the one change that you're trying to make requires you to make uh, 50 other changes, then the process becomes extremely time consuming. Excel and other spreadsheet programs give us the capability to design our spreadsheets in such a way that these are very, very robust when it comes to making changes. Right? So they will allow you to create a spreadsheet in such a way that you minimize the number of places where you have to make changes in order for the change to ripple through or propagate through the spreadsheet. Okay, uh, let's just get right into the concept of relative addressing to understand this better. Let's start off by considering an example. So here we've got a typical university kind of a setup example. You've got a bunch of students and you've got their scores in two tests and a final. And of course, you've got the overall score that we need to compute. And the overall score, let's say, is just the sum of the scores in the other three tests. That is in the first uh, test, the second test, and the final. It's just the sum. Okay. Now, we already know how to write a formula for this. We can just say uh, equals B2 plus C2 plus D2. This is going to be for the cell E2. We can do that. But of course, uh, as we discussed earlier, writing equals sum B2 colon D2 is preferable because now this includes a range B2 colon D2 and we know that when you have a range in a formula and let's say we have to insert one more test here, say test 3, then uh, if, it, if there's a range, uh, if that insertion affects a range, then Excel will automatically extend the range. In other words, it will automatically change the formula sum B2 colon D2 and it will make it sum uh, B2 colon E2. Because after all, if you insert uh, a column here, then this final will go into, let's say, uh, column E, and the range would now become uh, B2 to E2. We'll not have to make that change. Excel will make that change automatically. So whenever possible, if, it's, if there's a way we can write the formula in terms of a range, it's better to do that. OK, that's very simple. So we've written the formula, and we've written equals sum B2 colon D2. and that takes care of it. So here, as you can see, I have chosen the path of editing the formula within the cell itself rather than uh, writing the formula in the formula bar. Right? I had indicated earlier you can just double click in a cell and write the formula. So we have done that. So that's good. Okay. So and you see the result. It is 224, which is the sum of these three, uh, which is all good. Now, of course, we are faced with the problem of writing a formula for these other cells. Okay. Now you will say, well, there are only 11 rows, uh, rather there are 10 students actually. For one student, we've already written the formula. It's not a big deal to write a formula for the remaining nine students. It's not going to take that much time. Yes, that's very true. But this 10 students is just an illustration. Typically, when you're working with serious spreadsheets, you're going to have many, many more rows. Right. So you may have 50 students. You may even have 100 students. Or if you're talking about business context, when you're, let's say, talking about lists of customers, lists of products, you could have hundreds or thousands. And at that point, it's not practical for us to sit down and enter each of those formulas by hand. It's just pointless and uh, it defeats the very purpose of using Excel to do something like this. Okay, so clearly, writing such a formula like some B3 colon D3 for all the remaining cells is ruled out. Instead, what we'll do is the following. So what we're going to do first is I'll first show you the steps of what to do and then we'll understand what's going on. So what I'm saying here is first select this cell. Okay. So when you select the cell, you should note that from on the selected cell, there's a border that appears to indicate the cell is selected. And don't select the content of the formula that you wrote for E2, don't select the content of that formula from the formula bar. 
Instead, just click on the cell, click once, so that the cell content is selected. If you double click in the cell, then the formula that is in the cell will display and that's not what we want. Okay, so what we want to do is to simply select the cell and then copy the cell. Okay, or you can copy the cell by just doing, uh, you know, using the copy option from your uh, toolbar or you can do edit copy or you can do control C, whatever it is that you use in your operating system for copying, do that. Okay, so what we are really doing is we are copying the cell and we're going to paste it to all of these cells. Rather than entering an individual formula for each of these cells, we are simply going to copy this formula and paste it for all the remaining cells. Okay. Now you may th be thinking, well, that's not going to work because this formula has been written only for this row, which is the formula equals sum B2 colon D2 will work only for this row. If we copy it, it's not going to work for the remaining rows. You may think that, uh, so just hold on, that's exactly what's going to work and that is precisely the point of relative addressing which we'll understand shortly, right? So we're going to copy this, right? And then we're going to paste the thing. That is, uh, first what we're doing is we're just saying uh, paste it in this particular cell. That is, click in this cell and again notice the fact that the cell has been selected and then you're going to do paste. Whatever operation you do on your operating system to paste, do that. Uh, you can do control V uh, and that gets pasted, right? And then, of course, notice that the moment you pasted it, this is giving the correct result for this particular row. That looks quite miraculous. And if you go into this cell and if you look on top, you notice that Excel, instead of pasting equals sum B2 colon D2, it has actually pasted sum B3 colon D3. So what Excel has done is it has miraculously adjusted the formula to work for this row, right? So although the cell that we copied had the formula equals sum B2 colon D2, what has got pasted here miraculously is sum B3 colon D3, okay? This is not how we normally understand copy paste as working, but in Excel, this works intelligently and we'll shortly understand why this is uh, why this happened, right? So even though we copied from a cell with sum B2 colon D2, Excel very intelligently pasted sum B3 colon D3. You may see that I'm repeating the same idea a couple of times. I'm doing that because uh, there are actually speaking only a few very important concepts in Excel. And this is one of those very, very important concepts. Okay. Of course, I have not told you why it works the way it does. We'll get into that shortly, but you must see that this is quite miraculous and Excel seems to be having some kind of extra sensory intelligence, but very soon we'll understand how it's actually doing that. And that is really the concept of relative addressing, which we'll get into. Again, I stress that this is one of the most important ideas in Excel. So let's try and understand how Excel is actually acting like it's reading our minds. Okay, so crucial Excel lesson one is copy paste of cells behaves differently from usual. That is in other words, you select a cell and then you copy the cell rather than selecting a formula from the formula bar. Okay, that copy paste works normally, but when you select a cell and you copy it, Excel behaves differently from usual. It doesn't actually copy the formula in the cell. Instead, it does something different, which we'll understand now. Okay, so it does not copy either the formula or the value that is in the cell verbatim. In other words, what we're saying is, uh, uh, in the previous example, this cell contained the formula equals sum B2 colon D2, and it contained the actual result of 224, right? So when you select the cell and hit copy, it doesn't actually copy either of those two things, the formula or the actual value, okay? Instead, it copies something different, okay? And uh, therefore, the copy-paste behaves slightly differently and that is the source of the intelligence that Excel is displaying. Uh, but of course, when you do a copy-paste from the formula bar, right? In the formula bar, there's just some text that is displayed. If you copy-paste from that text, then it's just like regular copy-paste. So let's try and understand what this copy paste is all about. Okay, so let's demystify our copy paste. So when you 
copy a cell, Excel does not interpret the address in a formula literally. That is, if you have B2 colon D2 in this formula, right? That's the formula which is in this particular cell. When you copy it, it doesn't copy equals sum B2 colon D2. And that's what I mean by saying it doesn't interpret B2 colon D2 literally as it looks to us. Instead, it interprets the cell addresses in a formula as their relative positions from the cell in which a formula is. Okay, now that's a mouthful. Let's understand this. So this cell, here's the cell E2, contains the formula equals sum B2 colon D2. Okay, when you copy the cell and paste it, Excel doesn't actually, when you copy it, Excel doesn't interpret equals B2 colon D2 literally as B2 colon D2. Instead, it says B2 is the cell which is two cells or three cells to the left of the current cell. The current cell is the cell in which the formula is, which is E2, right? With respect to E2, B2 is the cell which is three columns to the left, right? This is E, this is B. So it's three columns to the left and it's on the same row as the current cell, right? So it says, and then D2 is the cell which is one column to the left and it's on the same row, right? So sum B2 colon D2 is actually interpreted as the sum of the cell uh, of the range starting from three columns to the left on the same row to one column to the left on the same row, right? So when you paste it, effectively Excel interprets that formula and pastes something that reflects that, right? So for example, when you paste that into E3, it's going to say sum of three columns to the left, which is now B3. And uh, the range is uh, three columns to the left, same row, one column to the left, same row. So that now becomes the range B3 colon D3. Okay, so when you now paste it, uh, it's going to paste that interpretation on, right? So what it copied is, it didn't copy literally sum B2 colon D2. Instead, it said, I need to sum the cells, uh, sum the range that starts three columns to the left on the same row and ends at one column to the left on the same row. That's what it copied. And when you paste it, that's what it's actually going to paste. Okay? So that's that's the really important thing to understand. So when you paste this, Excel is going to convert this interpretation back into the formula corresponding to the current cell wherever you're pasting it. Right? So now in the cell, when we paste it into E3, the cell three columns to the left and same row is now B3. And the cell one column to the left and in the same row is D3. And therefore, the formula that gets pasted is sum B3 colon D3. Okay? This is the beauty of relative addresses. Right? So when you put an address like B2 or D2, when you copy it, Excel always interprets these addresses as relative addresses. Not absolutely as B2 or D2. But it says, let's say the, uh, the address B2 occurs in a particular cell, for example, it occurs in E2, then B2 is simply treated as the cell which is three columns to the left and are on the same row. Okay, so that is what we mean by a relative address. Right, so again, as I already explained, uh, when you paste it into E3, it does the right computation and it pastes B3 colon D3. Okay, this is a very, very important idea to understand, the notion of a relative address. And in fact, all the addresses that we have written so far in this course, up to this point, are all relative addresses. But of course, whether an address is relative or not, plays a role only when we copy a cell and paste it somewhere. If you're not doing any copy pasting, then it doesn't matter if the cell is relative or not. The meaning of whether it's relative and all the subtleties of relative addresses, they don't come into play, which is why we really didn't have to bother about it up to this point. 
now we are starting about you are starting to talk about copying and pasting of cells and when when a cell contains an address right or when a cell contains a formula which is based on some addresses and then you copy and paste it then the whole magic of relative addressing comes into play which is why we are discussing it at this point of course we have to remember now that we are supposed to copy it uh, that formula not just to one cell which is to e3 but we are supposed to copy it to all of these cells and of course like i said if there are hundreds of students then you have to copy it to all of those students right so even the copy paste operation if you have to perform it for thousands of cells even that can be pretty uh, tedious but excel provides us a nice way to quickly copy and paste to many cells to do that of course like i said you could individually copy and paste but that can become tedious but the easier way is that when you have a cell you see that at the bottom of the cell is a small rectangle at the bottom right of the cell right in fact whichever cell is selected currently you will see its bottom right is a nice uh, small rectangle that appears at the bottom right and this is called as the fill handle right any cur currently selected cell will have the fill handle so all you have to do is to drag the fill handle to wherever you want to copy the that particular cell so it's a copy and paste a very quick copy and paste is by simply dragging the fill handle which means that you click hold it down and then simply drag it down all the way and then it simply copies from the source cell and then pastes into all the uh, areas which you traverse as you drag it okay so you just drag it from uh, e4 to e11 and this formula gets pasted to all of them and of course because the address is relative it pastes the correct formula for each of those cells okay now some practice for you in interpreting relative addresses suppose we have this spreadsheet you've got uh, b3 containing 10 b4 20 b5 30 and then in cell b6 we have the formula as you can see here equals average b3 colon b5 okay which is the average of 10 20 and 30 and of course it's 20 now what i'm saying is if you copy this cell and paste it into c6 right so you copy this from b6 copy the cell b6 paste it into the cell c6 what formula is going to be there in c6 after you finish pasting okay what i would strongly recommend is don't try this out in excel just based on your understanding of the concepts think about what the solution is going to be write it down and then continue the video so i would say pause the video now without using excel find out what formula is going to get pasted then continue the video to see if you got the answer right right because if you simply use excel and don't think for yourself you wouldn't have understood this concept and as i have already told you this is one of the few central concepts in excel if you don't understand this you cannot be an effective user of excel okay so pause the video determine your answer and then proceed okay so obviously the thing that is going to get pasted is average c3 colon c5 why is that the case because here it said b3 colon b5 and basically what it's saying is average the range which starts three cells above which means in the same column but three rows above and it ends one row above again in the same column okay so three rows above same column to one row above same column that's what is going to get pasted here and of course with respect to the cell c6 three rows above same column is now c3 and one row above same column is now uh, c5 okay so that is what is going to get pasted so what is going to get pasted is equals average c3 colon c5 okay let's do one more to test out your understanding so here what you have is you've got a formula in cell c1 which says equals a1 plus b1 and what we are talking about is if you copy this cell and paste it into d1 then what formula is going to get pasted into d1 okay once again remember the fact a1 and b1 are both relative addresses and excel is going to do the appropriate transformation okay again pause the video write an answer commit to an answer 
and then come back and check uh, whether your answer was correct or not. Once again, I strongly recommend don't just continue the video and see what the answer is without making an effort yourself and committing to an answer. Once again, even if you're not very confident about your answer, go ahead, make a commitment. Uh, I think it aids in the learning process. Okay, so pause the video and then go ahead to check your answer. Okay, so clearly the result that's going to get pasted is equals B1 plus C1. Why is that so? Well, if you wrote it down, you probably understand why it's so, but let me go through the logic anyway. Okay, if you say equals A1 plus B1, what you're saying, of course, A1 and B1 are both relative addresses, and therefore what you're saying is add up the contents of the cell, two cells to the left on the same row, to the cell, one cell to the left on the same row, because A1 is two cells to the left on the same row, B1 is one cell to the left on the same row, right? So what is going to get pasted is really add up two cells to the left, same row, plus one cell to the left, same row. And when you translate that in the context of D1, two cells to the left, same row, is now B1. One cell to the left, same row, is now C1. And therefore, equals B1 plus C1 is what is going to get pasted.